Beyond these barricades lies a former ranch and place of intense scientific study. A place that is reported to have a portal where interdimensional creatures, beings and unidentified flying craft have been witnessed. Where various bizarre cattle mutilations have occurred. The previous owners, farmers, fled in terror after many supernatural events had taken place. Also, the deaths of three farm dogs. Two black dogs were sent out that ran down towards us by the gate, trying to scare us off. Now we are in a legal area. I'm here uh, with uh, Larry, he's uh, from the Ute tribe here uh, in the Fort Duchesne area, it's Duchesne right? Yes, Duchesne. You've got to get the pronunciation right, you know. Okay, Larry, can you tell me a little bit about uh, yourself? Sure. Um, I, uh, I've grown up here on the reservation, uh, I'm uh, my name Larry Sespooch, Sespooch means uh, white belly in Ute. And my grandpa had a big white birthmark on his tummy, and uh, that was his Indian name. And when it came time to get all moved to the reservation and all of that, that name stuck with the rest of our family. So, Sespooch means white belly. Um, my mother's side are Kutches. Uh, both both families they come from uh, Colorado. Uh, the Utes pretty much occupied Colorado and Utah, and uh, um, my cut side, um, we use the eagle wing and the sweet grass, and we do blessings, and uh, the Creator uses that eagle wing to to transmit whatever He has for whoever we're working with. And, uh, but my family's done that for, uh, I have a wing that uh, is three generations, and so it's helped a lot of people, plus animals and a lot of different things. So it's very powerful, it has all that power within that. And I use it for terminal people, uh, cancer and those type of things. Um, So that's the gift that uh, my family has. My father also has uh, some special gifts that uh, are part of uh, who I am. And uh, so I'm going to just share with you some things I, I know about uh, this area. Uh, it's recently been called uh, Skinwalker Ranch. And uh, I think a lot of that publicity has come from some of the books that have been generated uh, uh, here locally and uh, say that that's a spot where skinwalkers are. But uh, I've always known that spot as uh, uh, there's a hill there and we call it uh, uh, Dead Man's Curve. You have to go around to get to that spot. And I think uh, that whole hill there uh, is uh, we know them nowadays like portals for other dimensions. And uh, but the stories that I recall um, go back from all my years of growing up in that area. I grew up in Fort Duchesne, and this location is probably. Oh, about two miles south of Fort Duchesne and uh, but I've always heard uh, people talk about red balls of fire that have come and chased tribal members on their car in that area and uh, 
Uh, I would imagine too as a portal like that that you would also get you couldn't really control what comes through it good or bad and so it's it's a door to another dimension and uh, so there's a lot, lot of different things that have happened through there. That Dead Man's Curve's got its name because uh, we've lost so many tribal members there in accidents. And mm. so there's a lot of spirits to me that are still kind of locked in there as well. Mm. And so it's really dangerous during the winter months especially, but it, uh, I think there's a lot of other energy that's involved with those accidents when they happen there. Um, the most recent um, um, sighting or significant thing that's come through that portal is uh, has been a big ship, um, and it's flown right over the small communities down there. And uh, hopefully, uh, we'll you'll get a chance to talk to some of them. You're going to say something. Uh, yes. Well, could you uh, describe this ship? You know what people have seen. Yeah, I guess it it's uh, bigger than their home, so it's pretty significant size. Um, um, just that it was mammoth and just kind of made their house disappear when it flew over. A lot of lights, a lot of, uh, well, they can tell you what their accounts are. But uh, we had some of our uh, sweat people came in for sweat and were saying that they'd seen that that night before. Mm. And, uh, but yeah, it doesn't, doesn't uh, surprise me. I know historically our people have always uh, just accepted those things as part of this universe. And uh, so we've lived pretty much in harmony with anything that's come through there. And maybe some of the negative stuff, uh, they, they scare our people because we don't know what it is. And, uh, but uh, I know that that has probably been there a long time. Uh, you see on the native uh, rock writing or petroglyphs that you'll see some images uh, I think uh, those were visitors uh, before us um, that came and uh, then as far as the skinwalker thing I, I it's come to be known as that uh, nowadays and uh, well I understand the Navajo, Navajo uh, that's the term skinwalker from the Navajo right right, right. Yeah. and, yeah. and uh, we've always called them uh, 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 you go you you know you uh, no that's kind of, uh, uh, I have to think about that You know. I, I can I'm trying to think of what how we say it in you but what it means in this part maybe you may want to figure out how what way to say it but we say that it's Navajo people because a lot of even they will tell you that there are things that go on down there but uh, I remember a long time ago asking my mother because they had heard or seen things around. And I remember asking her, and uh, she said, there, there are people that have used, that use maybe the dark side to acquire what they want. So maybe it's money, maybe it's love, whatever. And, uh, um, nowadays we call them a cult or something like that, mm -hmm. but from my understanding, this has gone way back to my grandpa's generation and 
prior to that, so it's been around for a long time. But he said, uh, um, said uh, he met a girl at one of the boarding school, a Navajo girl, real pretty, and uh, that uh, school was out, and of course they went home. And one evening, there was a knock at the door, and it was her. And he said, well, what are you doing here? And how'd you get here? And, and I guess they went and talked and walked and whatever. Um, but it started to get dark. And she said, well, I'm going to have to go now. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, how are you going to go? And she didn't say anything. And uh, uh, so she left. and. But she said, I'll be back to see you in a few days. And sure enough, she kept doing this. And uh, her, his parents said, who is that girl? And where is she coming from and stuff? And, and uh, but I guess, and it's not just women, it's men too. It depends. I think a lot of it is, is, is seeking something rather mm -hmm. it's money some people are after money some are after love i think a lot of it is that thinking they love this person so they go try to um, make them love them and uh, even they'll take hair and things to try to mm. possess it sounds like a lot like mm -hmm. voodoo or right, witchcraft right, that right, kind of thing right, some right. similar kind of thing right and so, uh, you know, I understand that. Mm, just like there's a lot of other things that we just don't talk about. But I wanted to talk about those things because I wanted to set what the record straight as far as I know it, as far as skinwalkers, werewolves, uh, any of that kind of stuff. And then this portal down there that's what's coming through there. Um, but I, I, I'm a pipe carrier, and uh, those times that I've had families come and ask me for help because something's bothering them, I will load my pipe, which is the creator, that's his tool, and I will go there and I will smoke and smudge the house, smudge the mm -hmm. people. And that's as good as it gets. Yeah. You cannot control what's out there. Yeah. There's so much right. out there. Right. And all you can do is just take care of yourself. It may be right here. Right. But it can't do anything because right. you have control of yourself. Right. And when you don't have control is when they can hurt you. Right. So it, someone with a lot of fear, yeah, they're yeah, probably gaining even yeah, more control. Yeah. Now, I, when I was sitting on your couch a little earlier, yes. I felt someone, something come up it and was, touch me on my right arm. That was my partner. She uh, passed away here in November. So she comes around, she'll do that with me, just kind of touch me. And I mean, a lot of times when I'm working, it'll be just that. Yeah. What kinds of, you know, maybe creatures or entities or craft that, that you have personally witnessed yourself, if you feel comfortable discussing that? Sure. Uh, back in. Uh, 1969, it was our uh, last uh, football game of the season down in Moab, Utah. And uh, like a lot of guys, we were going to go celebrate after. And so we had a friend check us out, uh, saying we were with our parents and had all that permission. And anyway, we went out to uh, Dead Horse National Monument, which is uh, maybe about eight miles out of uh, north of Moab to uh, Dead Horse National Monument and drove back in there about 10 miles and, and we're drinking some beer and we were on this little Volkswagen bus, big four or five big football player guys and uh, uh, we're sitting out on the, on the Volkswagen sipping suds and all of a sudden this thing come over the, the horizon there it was was nighttime you had moon but you could this thing you could tell 
something was there. It was transparent, sort of like a bubble, mm -hmm. and it would change from green to blue and red hues, and but it was transparent to where you could see through and see the stores, and you kind of had to look to see if you really seen something. Mm -hmm. But there were lights around the middle part of it that you could, when it moved, you'd see those lights move. And it's almost like um, the movie Alien, how he can go transparent. Oh. But you see him, it's like almost a like a water. Yeah, right, predator. right, right. Yeah, like the Predator. And it could change like that. And uh, we all seen it and looked at each other, tossed our beers, jumped in that little Volkswagen, all of us trying to squeeze yeah. through the door. And it would come up every now and then to just kind of see where we were at. And as we got to the main road, it just came up and shot straight up, and that was it. So ever since that time, I, I really believe anything that we experience is part of what makes us whole. And so uh, being a pipe carrier, my fourth bowl full or fourth load is what I say to those, uh, we call them extraterrestrials, but uh, they're just other beings. Uh, to, to think that we're the ultimate in the universe is really small thinking. And uh, just like this part, all those things have been there for ages. And uh, so uh, I think you, you are privy they choose who they appear to, and uh, uh, sometimes it feels like you're drawn to it, and you don't know why, but you, yeah. and then you have this experience. Um, but my whole life has been like that with spiritual things, uh, and it's this gift. Uh, um, so I take care of all the spiritual things for my family and then whoever I take care of when the sweat lodges here we sweat every other Sunday and so all those things I think for me keeps me grounded yeah. to where uh, negative things uh, know that there there's no chance or uh, a waste of time and so when I go out and help people, I also have to face that other side. Yes. And when I know what I have behind me with all my help, um, I'm not afraid. But those other things, they know it will scare you. Yeah. And they will come in those forms and... and uh, Um, I don't know if you're at leisure to say, say this, but has anybody ever been killed or seriously injured by any of these forces that you can mention? Well, it's like I say with that dead man's curve, I think maybe some people have seen things, or maybe the accident has happened because of something. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I mean, slippery road and that curve it's easy to slide time. right off oh, I yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah. Uh, but there's been so many other accidents that have happened there that you know you just kind of wonder then those people have been chased by things um, I myself um, we were probably in junior high and we grew up down on the river that was behind our place there in Fort Duchesne and our grandparents and parents used to always say, you guys don't go down to that river at night. There's spirits down there. So, ah, we're not afraid of no mm -hmm. spirits. And we went and made some, some torches, and there was about four or five of us guys. And, and we start down towards the river, and, and there's a footbridge that uh, went across the river, and, and things were always being seen through there. Mm -hmm. uh, from the old fort days and all the old youths used to live down on that river. And so as we started down off this hill towards the, the footbridge, there's like a white post that somebody had put there. It was like a fort, but they cut off the forks, 
so it's just like a Y and we, as we start to get close to that Y maybe about a oh, uh, hundred yards or so this light comes and it's about the height of a person and it's not like a light bulb but it's light it's hard to explain mm -hmm. um, and it's not a bright light but it's almost like uh, like those uh, lamps. Uh, oh, the cha oh, the uh, miners lamps. Uh, yeah, something scene. like that, yeah. but yeah. kind of like that. It, it wasn't a bright light, but mm. like a flame, uh, but yet it was circular, mm. and this thing started coming towards us on this road. And we all look at each mm. other, and we, then about that time, a big gust of wind comes, and it blows out the torches. And this thing is coming and couple jump to one side and the other on the other and this thing just goes by us and goes up the road so I did just pretty much ignored you yeah and uh, oh man we crawled over each other running to get back home got back home told the parents and they said see we told you don't go down there there's good and bad stuff down there but we've always grown up with with things and I mean it's just like you and I talking I have stuff come through here just like you being touched before I have things that uh, tell me this is going to happen and I I don't like it but that's all part of this gift because mm. I don't want to know I don't you know, and uh, especially like terminal people, um, you just watch them go from being healthy to, to gone. Mm. But that's what you said you would do.